Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another edition of the Spurs Chat Podcast. In this episode, we'll be discussing Tottenham's win against Nottingham Forest. Of course, the game has just finished. Spurs 3, Forest 1. Spurs are back in the top four. We have now played 31 games, won 18, drawn 6, lost 7. Goal difference of plus 20. We have 60 points. We still have a game in hand over Aston Villa, who have now fallen down to fifth. Of course... Um, Tottenham Hotspur went 1-0 up after 15 minutes, an own goal by Santiago Costa dos Santos. And then Chris Wood equalised in the 27th minute. Mickey van der Ven putting Spurs ahead in 52 minutes. And then six minutes later, Pedro Poro making it 3-1. Now, the stats from the game, Spurs had 64% possession to Forest, 36%. Shots, Spurs had 17, Forest had 13 um, shots on target, Spurs had seven to Forest six. Corners, Spurs had 12 to Forest two. And fouls, Spurs 11, Forest 12. Now, as usual, we are live on YouTube, on X and on Facebook. So please do get involved. Give us your thoughts on today's game and let us know where you are watching from and listening from around the world. As usual, I've got three very special guests back with us. It's been far too long. Gary Maloney. Gary, how are you? Yeah, I'm good. Thanks, Chris. Um, yeah, just glad we got it done in the end. It was the usual first half sort of performance, but second half was, was all good, so I'm happy, yeah. Back in the top four, as I said, all smiles this evening. Uh, back with us also is channel regular Craig Dearman. Craig, how are you? Yeah, I'm all good. Yeah, yeah, bit bit hoarse, actually. Um, but a bit, bit of shouting at the telly in the first half as well. I think I got a bit of a cold coming. I had a bit of a heavy night last night, but, you know, That's as, more as like you it. probably... Remember, mm. yeah, 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 that's probably what it is. But yeah, uh, yeah, smiles. But there's a few things we got to talk about in there. But uh, we got the three points, which is the most uh, important thing. Smiles all round, and uh, smiles, big smiles from actor Ricky Norwood back with us. Rick, how are you, mate? Oh, I'm good. I'm buzzing, bro. A big three points back in the top four. You know, um, a, a overall good performance. Um, and I, I, I'm just happy to be back on the show and be back with these gentlemen and uh, discussing the game today so let's have it hopefully it's not as chaotic as it was when i was in the stadium with you chris hopefully do you know what i mean hope well you never know with you we, we might have some um little kind of cameo appearances who knows <laughs> professional professional podcast today but i must say i've bumped into a lot of people today and they've said who's on the podcast this evening and when i've said gary craig and ricky a lot of people have said the same words the dream team That's <laughs> Oh, oh, I, I wonder. She asked me about ten years ago. He's on the show. And when I said it, was, she goes, "Oh, that's the dream team." There you go. I, I, I wondered if he was going to say when you said you asked people who was on and people said one word. It could have been worse, couldn't it? Let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start the show with you, Gary. Your thoughts on today's game? Three-one. Yeah, I'm really pleased with the result. In the end, I thought we started really good. That first ten minutes or so, you know, we were flying. I thought, yeah, good. It's nice to see us come out all guns blazing because we don't normally in games. Um, and then that was it. We kind of, you know, we got the goal and then we kind of sat back a bit then and we just invited the pressure. And the first half was a bit frustrating. I mean, you know, like you saw yourself, we could have been behind going in, going into the, um, at the break. Um, but thankfully, you know, we came out second half and I think you've got to give it to Ange today. The substitutions, pretty much every substitution he made was spot on. It really improved the team and, um, and I, I must say, I think Hoiberg had a really good game, you know. he's He's been really good when he's come on. So, yeah, fair play to him. Um, yeah, so overall, happy. Predicted 3-1, so I'm glad I got another prediction right. I don't get many, so all, all good. All pleased. Let's come to you, Craig. Let's have your thoughts on this evening's win. Yeah, same as Gary. I mean, I mean, we, we flew out the traps as normal. It's kind of like the same pattern in a lot of games, isn't it? You know, we start off like a train. Start off really well. Obviously, didn't get that early goal, but we start really well, and then, then obviously we sit back. You know, you know. We're obviously, we we did eventually get the own goal, uh, and then sit back, and then second half we kind of put right what went wrong, and like Gary and uh, I may have mentioned it uh, a couple of times in our chat that I said we need Pierre Emil Hoybier in that midfield, especially today. Yes. Um, but I yeah. think he's pushing for a start because you could see 
you could see that midfield it just wasn't clicking and sometimes you need him in there just he's like he's like the glue so he, i thought he was outstanding when he came on i personally think he's pushing for a start now at newcastle to be honest because he just seemed to calm everything down he didn't do a lot wrong there was one misplaced pass i can think of but apart from that i thought he was absolutely outstanding but yeah he's kind of a pattern isn't it like like everybody watching will know what i mean by that you know start off fast sit back and then go again in the second half and our fitness kind of tells a lot of the time to be fair i think i think the lads are a lot fitter than a lot of the other teams so 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 look, it, look at this stage of the season um it's just all about getting the points on the board but we've got to be you know we've got a very tough run of fixtures coming up now so you know we've got to play the top three we've got to play newcastle so nothing's easy but you know we, we're in a decent spot we're in a decent place at the moment so we've just got to keep that that momentum going now Ricky, let's get your thoughts. I know I've just put the top four um, on the screen again. It just feels so good to be back in the top four because, of course, you know, if Anne Postacoglu gets Spurs over the line and we are playing Champions League football here next season, he's worked a miracle, hasn't he? Because, you know, you go back to the start of the season. If you'd have said to anybody, we will be in a European spot come the end of the season with Harry Kane leaving, Anne Postacoglu coming in. It's amazing, isn't it? It is. It is. It's um. It is an amazing turnaround, bro. But I would go even further back. Like you know, as, as we finished that season last season, you know, it was like the the feeling in 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 my heart, in my stomach, in my soul was it was down in the depths, man. I was like, I don't know what's going to happen with this team right now. And then there's talk of Harry leaving, and then there's it, it's like there was so many things wrong from top to bottom that we felt. You know, it wasn't just the football; it was the recruitment, and then it was. Some of the scouts and the medical, it was top to bottom. There was 101 problems that Ange had to come in and solve. And you know what? Like, he, he didn't miss a beat and he didn't miss a minute. He, he has worked tremendously hard. And again, you know, he's still in his infancy. With Ange, he's, he's not been, like, overly happy, like 100% happy with the performance. Even when we we done the Aston Villa game, 4-0, four, uh, four you know, there hasn't been a game where he's been 100% happy. Like, they ask him, oh, is this the Tottenham that, you know, you're, you're looking to see? Or is this is this what you're training? Is, is, is this, you know, is, is this the Ange ball that, you know, that, that has been promised for so long? Um, and he's always said there's more work to do. He's always said that there's more work to do in, in the transfer window, but there's more work to do on the training field. He's always said um, there's more... To, to do up front in the attacking areas as well. So he's never been happy. So to get here and to have these performances and to be back in the top four after a crazy, tumultuous uh, season, you know, um, starting the way we did without Harry Kane, 10 games on the bounce, you know, winning, winning, well, majority winning, but being unbeaten in those 10, then Chelsea, where it all collapsed, and then we've, we've had like eight, eight, 18 games where suspensions, injuries, um, international tournaments, you know, that has made it a really rocky road to, to, to kind of travel down. Um, out of both cups, you know, um, and then we start getting our little bits and pieces together. We start getting our first teamers back, and we're hoping to see that click again that we saw in those first 10 games. And it, and it's, it's, juttered and sometimes we've seen it and sometimes it's been a bit kind of like in 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 fits and bits um but like we're getting there and they give me so much encouragement and the the whole coaching staff the tactics what what they're doing how they want to play um it's exciting it's brave it's the tottenham that i want to see and we're, and we're doing it uh, when we make those mistakes when we when we fail when we lose and drop points it's because the majority of the time, we haven't done what he's wanted us to do. It's when we revert back, and it's mostly the players that will revert back to a kind of, you know, um, a, maybe a Conte way or just a lethargic way. I don't want to say Conte. Let's just say let's just say the lethargic because we've seen that many a time with Tottenham, and they kind of revert back to this thing. It's it's when they don't do it. I mean, against West Ham last uh, midweek, I only got to see the second half of it, but. What it looked like to me is that there was a lot of energy, there was a lot of fight, there was a lot of kind of want, but it looked like they were forcing it. They, it looked like they were trying to, to, to not be in the flow. When Ronnie O'Sullivan's in his flow, the snook, famous snooker player for those around the world, if you don't know, 
when he's in his flow, he's untouchable. He puts the he he puts the cue ball on a penny wherever he wants it. When he's off, when he's thinking about it too much, he pulls a shot wide or he puts too much power on it or too much spin. And I think that that's what we was doing against West Ham in that second half. We was forcing the issue. We was trying to play the way. Today, in that first half, the first 25, 27 minutes, up until they scored, I felt that we was in total control, domination. I felt that we was in our flow. My Where I started to get a bit upset was when we conceded that goal. And it, it was... The way that we conceded it, again, way too easy to concede it. But it was the reaction. It was like they, it was the first time I've, I, it felt like they dropped their heads. And I was just praying to get to half time, get to half time. And then our manager does what our manager does and, and ma- it makes changes early, right? Makes yeah. vital changes early. And this is what I, I've been kind of saying, and, and a lot of us have been, been saying, but mostly about consequence. If you come in and have a bad game, you know, then you've got to be taken out the next one. Or you give them a go. You go, go on, I trust you. Because they're not bad players. For instance, Kulazewski, they're not. he's not a bad player, but he, he's not playing to his best form. And he, he took him out. At halftime today, he took out the midfield, which was not clicking. It was not working. He made that change quickly. And like Gaz said there, totally changed the game. You know, uh, we were back on the front foot. There was calmness and then there was silkiness from Bentoncourt. And we we made it happen. We got those three points, good goals and good fighting spirit again. Hopefully this is the momentum that we need to keep pushing forward and and to make that top four position happen at the very least. You're talking about top four, Ricky, as I was a couple of minutes ago. And Foster Coglu has literally just started his post-match press conference. And the first words out of his mouth is, I couldn't care less about the top four race. Good. I like that. Yeah. Well, I before, like it. Before the game, um, a display of Korean culture um, to mark Hunmin Son's latest milestone, a screening of a special video celebrating Hunmin Son's 400th appearance, accompanied by um, live on pitch performance from the Schiller Ensemble, uh, traditional Korean music. Um, now, this fixture was also the club's dedicated no room for racism game with all Premier League games from the 6th to the 15th of April supporting the campaign. And during the game, we were actually given the very sad news that former Tottenham Hotspur player Joe Kinnear has sadly passed away um, aged 77. He played for the club between 1966 and 1975, won the FA Cup with Tottenham, two League Cups and a UEFA Cup. So rest in peace, uh, Joe Kinnear. Um, Ricky, um, actually, Gary, let's come to you. Um, let's talk about the starting eleven because, of course, Ange Postecoglou made one change today. Um, I said on the previous uh, couple of podcasts that it's very, very difficult um, at the moment to try and predict what Ange is going to do. And I'm sure during this podcast we're going to talk um, about the same thing we did Tuesday night after the West Ham game because I'm going to ask you all the question, who is the preferred and who is the best uh, midfield three to go with. Of course, Saar came back into the team today, uh, the one change. Um, so the team in four was Vicario, Pedro Poro, Romero, Van der Ven, Udogi, Basuma, Saar, Madison, and then the front three of Johnson, Timo Werner and Hunmin Song. Subs today, um, Hoybier, Dragushin, uh, Royale, Lo Celso, Kulusevski, Bentonkirk, Davis, Austin, and Dane Scarlett, of course, was drafted in because Rosalison was out of this game today. Gary, any surprises there for you? And, you know, I definitely want to talk about who is the best three in the middle for you. Yeah, not really. I wasn't really surprised, to be honest, because I know he's, he does that. He does change it up and stuff. But, I mean, you must admit, when Bentecourt came on, I mean, the difference, you know, I, I didn't think Basuma had his best game either. Um, but, look, it, the thing is with Ange, like, you know, the last game, he just took Madison off. He's not scared to change me. If someone isn't having a good game, he'll just take them off and he'll change it. And I do like that. I think, you know, sometimes under Poch, he was guilty of just sticking with the same team and it get a bit frustrating. And the changes were too late and you'd be thinking this isn't working. And, you know, Craig touched on it earlier, and Ricky, we started really good, you know. Um, I mean, albeit, though, that Morello um, shot, you see that one from the half, if that had gone in, Wow, that, that was crazy, wasn't it? That was a good effort. But look, we took the lead. But it's just, it's always the same with Tottenham. It's, you know, you go 1-0 up, 
And then we just sit back. And, and the first half in comparison to the second half, it's like two different teams. It's just, it's crazy. But like I said earlier, you know, it, it wasn't really working. And as soon as he made all them changes, that was it. We just stepped up another level. And, you know, and that's the beauty. Our bench now, you've got them sort of players on the bench. You know, Ricky Touch, Kulu, he's not having a great time at the moment, but he's still a quality player. He can still come on and change a game. You know, didn't have his best game today, no. But it's not to say in his next he won't. Do you know what I mean? And I think that's the beauty. We've got them players where you can, you know, OK, they're all quality players, but if they're not having a good game, you can take them off and replace them with quality players. And that's something we haven't had for a long time. So when the game isn't kind of going your way and it's sort of slipping away and you're thinking to yourself, because really we could have gone, you know, we should have gone in the break 2-1 down. I mean, how he misses that and hits the post is just, you know, I don't even know. But as luck would have have it, we went in, you know, on even Stevens and um, he changed it up and I just thought second half, we were brilliant. And if you think about it, Really, we probably should have won 5-1 because Johnson's effort, I don't know how he saves that, and then Son hits the post. So, you know, it was comfortable in the end. And really, I think 3-1 was a little bit flattering to them. I think we probably should have won that 4-5-1 or five one in the end. But like we always do, we made hard work of it. But that's that's what Tottenham do. You know, we all do our group things and stuff. And, and when people are putting in these scorelines, you know, I think it's all... We're going to concede as Tottenham. We're not going to keep a clean sheet. This is what Spurs do. Even in games that we're controlling and, and it's comfortable, you know, apart from the Villa, there ain't been many, has there? It's, it's bizarre. Gary, what did you make of Nuno Espirito Santo's return to the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium? Because I've got to admit, I did look down there at one time thinking, yeah. what was he doing back? <laughs> well, he, he definitely made us proud today, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Love it, love it. Ooh. Craig, um, just a one change from Ange Postacoglu today. Were you surprised by the lineup? And who is the preferred three? Who's going to be the preferred three? You've touched on it already um, for that Newcastle game. Do you think that Eve Basuma will now be dropped? Um, it wasn't a surprise that Sarr came back into the lineup because um, I think he's been one of our most consistent midfielders this season. I think he's had a good season. Um, but I don't think any of the centre midfielders had a particularly good game today, the ones that started. Um, and as we've touched on, it needed changing up in there. What it, it is really strange because you look at the names and you think, oh, if you've got a midfield of Bissouma, Saar and Madison, that, that's got to be one of the best midfields in the Premier League. But really, they just haven't been clicking. They need that chemistry and they just don't have it sometimes. So what is our best centre midfield? I honestly, not sure. But for me, against Newcastle, starting-wise, it's got to be now. Hoybier and Bentancur are definite shoe-ins for me. And it's whether Madison or Lo Celso. Now, probably Madison still gets the nod there because Lo Celso is still coming back from injury, I think. Did he have a knock or something? But perhaps he hasn't done quite enough to warrant the starting place yet. And um, to be honest, Lo Celso spent more time on the floor today than... Um, than he did on his feet, I think, which is not, oh, there's not a criticism. I think he wins a lot of free kicks for us, which he, which is great. He just goes to show he gets stuck in. Um, I would like to see Lo Celso given a chance, whether, whether it's, whether it's in place of Madison against Newcastle, I'm not sure. I think Madison hasn't hit his top form again. He, he hasn't looked the same to me since he got that injury at Chelsea. So he's obviously, there's something still not quite right there. Perhaps he's still getting his fitness up. I can't believe that. We're now in obviously April. Um, so he should, you'd think he'd be fit, but just something not quite clicking there in Madison at the moment. Um, obviously, he had, the, he had that little uh, one that got me on edge a little bit when he, he uh, punched that, that fella in the stomach. I can't remember his name. Um, but it wasn't worthy of a red card, um, which I'm sure we'll come on to. But, um, you, you know, you, you, you're, you're treading yeah. the line there doing anything like that, aren't you? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, thanks, mate. So, um, yeah, for me, Definitely Hoybier and Bentica have got to start, like Gary said, after Bentica's performance we come on. We already touched on Hoybier, I thought was outstanding, settled everything down. Uh, and like I say, probably Madison, Chris, I would imagine will get the nod um, in that midfield. But um, Kulosevsky, I didn't think really did enough when he came on. He had some opportunities, which we'll come on to. But he, again, he seems to have lost a bit of form for me. Just before I come to you, Ricky, I just want to say that right at the end of the game, I normally video the players coming off the pitch. 
And I think it says a lot sometimes about players' body language and, and the way that they are. And I've spoken quite um, lengthy about Pierre Mujoybier and his body language throughout this season. This is the first time I've actually seen him uh, and Ange Postacoglu run over to him and hug him after the game. Uh, and normally you see Pierre Mujoybier the first down the tunnel and not celebrating with all of the other players. That was totally different today. He was involved in the celebrations at the end of the game. And Ange and him, um, please do check out the video on this channel um, after you've listened and watched this podcast, because uh, I thought that that was a great moment. Um, you know, I always speak about players walking down the tunnel first, but I think that that was well worth mentioning about that hug, because I think it says a lot. Um, Ricky, do you think, um, before I ask you about the lineup, do you think there's any chance of Pierre Mujoybier staying at Spurs? Because it's interesting you know, on this podcast, so often, you know, everyone has said, well, it looks like Pierre Mihoybier wants to go. It looks like he's going to go. Um, he's not good enough. He's this, he's that. You know, he's been a player that has been heavily criticised. But it is fair to say, and I think it's very, very fair to say, this season, whenever called upon by Ange, he's done a great job. Every single time. Every single time. I know that, you know... Um... Hoiberg's a bit like Marmite. You either love him or you really dislike him, you know, within the fan base. But I've always stuck up for him. You know, I've always appreciated what he does bring to the side. I've appreciated what he brought to the side when he was signed. You know, we didn't have no midfield when he, when he signed. And he, he was doing three, four players' jobs. He was covering right back, left back, and the other midfielder as well. Um, he is a professional, even though this year has been really difficult for him. Every single time he's come off the bench, he's been a true professional. I've never seen him shy away from anything. I, I've, you know, he's, he's been there for the calls. Um, and, you know, big credit to Anne for, for crediting where credit was due and, and going up to Hoiberg and giving him that love and respect uh, for going out there and do, doing that job for us today. Um, whether he stays or not, it's, it's up in the air. Maybe Hoiberg might be over the Tottenham project right now and, and fighting for his place. He might be. Um, he, he might want a nailed-on guaranteed place because that's what he's used to having at Tottenham. So maybe that's a, a bit of a niggle for him. And we don't know what Ange is thinking right now. He might just appreciate him and what he's doing and his attributes in midfield right now. He might have his eye on another player that's going to come in there. So right now we don't know, but what, what I do appreciate is that again is that every time he does come in, he he gives his all, and you know it wasn't just um, tackles or screening today or or, or you know doing what a, a traditional number six does. It was some of some of the times there was first time passes, there was first time flicks. He was trying to get on the ball. He came on. He took two long shots from outside the box. Yeah. You know when the crowd said shoot, he shot. And yes, it dribbled. It, it, it wasn't the it wasn't the, the you know the, the the most powerful of shot, but he took it and he was he was like sometimes it's not about the tiki taka and, and the the intricate passing. He's like sometimes you do have to lash it, and and he gave it a go. Um, so big respect to Hoberg. I've always liked him. I like all of our boys. You know, what I mean, we can critique him like I say all the time, but I've got love for him all and. And and big respect to him for not only putting in that performance today, but but for for doing that throughout the season in a really tough position. You know, um, whether he starts or not against Newcastle, for me, I would definitely put him in there, and I'd put him in there with Saar, just because I I think they're managing Benton Cor's minutes right now, and you know that broken little toe, he's still recovering from from that knee injury as well. Um, he come on and look bright and he comes on and he definitely contributes to the game when he does come on, makes an impact. And I think that he would probably go with the younger legs in midfield alongside Hoiberg and Madison and then 60, 65 minutes again, bring on um, Benton Cole to either calm, calm it down or push us forward because he does, he does both. So I think that's probably where they're going to go right now. Gary, let's come to you. Um, I don't normally go until the, um, you know, we normally go in, uh, you know, from the first minute onwards. But Nuno Espirito Santo has just had an interview with Sky Sports and he said it's clear it is a red card. He believes that James Madison should have been sent off for the challenge on Yates. It, I, I don't know. I, 
it didn't look that much. You know what I mean? It went to VAR and they had a look and stuff. I, I, I'm not sure. I think it's one of those sort of amber, orange ones. I don't think it's a red card, personally. I, I don't. And I'm not, that's not just with my Tottenham tinted glasses on. If it was the other way around, I wouldn't be looking at that thinking a red card, if I'm honest. So, so no, not yeah, for me. We, I, it was a red card, in my opinion, on La Celso late in, in the second half or something. You know, so that was a knee-high challenge, exactly the same as the Romero one against Chelsea. So, yeah. if he wants to say it's, t- you know, red card, fair enough. But I we should think, put out the red. it was a red card, do you, Ricky, yeah? No, I, no, no. For, for, for me, I was going to say he, the, the, the guy should have got a second yellow for calling for VAR. But, do you know what I mean? Yeah, if you want to call... Because you're meant if, to now, isn't it? If, if you want yeah. to call for, for reds on reds, for, for, to me, I, and I didn't see it as, as clear as may, maybe you gents have already, but yeah. for me, it looked like more of a, it looked like more of a get out of my way, like what you on my yeah, back. It, it looked more of a, it looked more of a shove. Than, it was than a shove. Punch. I mean, for a red card, it's got to be violent conduct. And it's, it wasn't violent conduct, was it? Do you know what I mean? When, a bit of bickering when, it was. It's nothing. When Deli Ali punched, I can't remember who. Do you remember, do you remember when he'd done the punch at the corner? Like yeah. that was a red card. That was a yes. punch in the stomach. Do you know yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah. To me, to me, Madison today it was more of a shove, and he was looking to get him sent off. So he should have. Did, he, did really he get a yellow him. Madison for that? No. I uh, know he, he got a talking to. Yeah, he didn't even get booked for it, did he? No. 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 Vicario has just taken to Instagram and said, "Oh, when the Spurs go marching in, great atmosphere and three more points, buzzing." Um, Gary, let's come to you. Um, now, just after two minutes, Basuma had a shot over the bar. Um, you mentioned this. After 11 minutes, Nottingham Forest had the lob uh, attempt over Vicario that went wide. After 12 minutes, Basuma had another shot deflected over the bar. And then Spurs took the lead after 15 minutes. Of course, it was an own goal. Uh, but a great cross in by Timo Werner. Now, the question yeah. that we've been asking lately, every guest that comes on here... Fifteen million pounds for Timo Werner, yes or no? At the moment, I'm still going to say no. I just feel he needs to just do a bit more in his end game with shooting and stuff. But I think he's he's got the pace. He's whipping in some good balls, and he did whip in a few good balls today. And you can't blame him at that. There, there wasn't players really, you know, like going for the balls that he's passing. In. But for me, on what he's done so far. Um, there's just not much of an end product. So for me, I'm still saying no. I want it to work for Timo, I really do. But I find myself watching him in games like again today, feeling like he's not done enough. You know, that's that's just my my opinion. That, that's all. Gary, do you think that Ange Postacoglu can get the best out of Timo Werner? Because, I was, do you know what? I, I, I was absolutely battered the other night um, on Tuesday because I yeah. said on the podcast that I believe that every game that Timo Werner plays, I think that we get 1%, 2% more out of Timo Werner because I think that Ange is improving him. A lot of people disagree. Where do you stand? No, I, think, I think it's quite clear to see that Ange can improve any players. I think, you know, we've got ourselves probably one of the best managers and he may go down as one, one of the best managers ever for Tottenham. And I do honestly mm. believe that. I think he's a real people's person and he does bring out the best in players. But, and I don't, I don't want to sound horrible when I say this, but there comes a point when it is down to that player and their technical ability. And I just feel for Timo Werner for just so many years, his technical ability, like he's got the pace. He, If he gets his runs right, he stays on side and he can whip crosses in. And Chris, when we was at Old Trafford and I was interviewed about him, I said the same thing. I think he's going to get assists. I think he's going to get, get give us a lot of pace, but he's not going to get as many goals. Is that going to be worth signing him at the end of the season? I don't know. If he gets a, you know, seven, eight, nine assists, maybe. Hold know. on. Hold on. In that interview with the Daily Mail, Gary, yeah. they did say to you, who would you prefer, Ivan Tony or Werner? And your answer yeah. was Werner. Uh, yeah, and I'll tell you why. Do you know why? Because I like Werner and he's honest, whereas Ivan Tony isn't. <laughs> he can, what's he do? He comes straight off a ban for gambling and moves the ball over. No, don't want him in my team, thanks. Fair. Craig, where do you stand on Timo Werner? Because, you know, today it was another great ball in, yeah. resulting in another goal. Exactly what he did on Tuesday evening. Yeah, it did make me laugh when you said you got absolutely battered. You was battered on the podcast Tuesday. I thought that was Saturday. But anyway, it's another story. <laughs> um, uh, Timo Werner, for me, um, I think I think personally we should sign him. Uh, and if you look at it like this, if it's 15 million, um, if it's a straight choice between Timo Werner and Brian Gill, 
which you could argue it is. I'd rather have yeah. Timo Werner. And you could sh should be able to offload Brian Gill for 15 million, in which case is zero for Timo Werner. So if you look at it like if you look at it like that. So for me, yeah. I I think Werner, I, I don't know what his stats are, but he set up a fair few goals, whether that be, and you don't get the assist for own goals, which I've no. never quite understood myself. Yeah, it's, strange, if, if, yeah, it's weird. But if you if you add them in. He's got a few assists and he seems to be striking up a really good relationship with Brennan Johnson um, when Brennan cuts him from the right. So I think that's only going to get better. Personally, <laughs> personally for me, I, w I would. I liked, I've, I've always liked Werner. Even when he was at Chelsea, I thought there's a player in there. Didn't have his best spell at Chelsea, obviously. But the first season, first spell he had at RB Leipzig was he was just sensational so yeah I, I think he's worth I, I don't think personally I, I've said before I don't even think it's a gamble taking him for 15 million because even if he has a mediocre season next season you give him a three or four year contract you probably get your money back anyway so so for me I think it's a no-brainer I think we have got to sign him but that's just my opinion Ricky, do you, do you think that Ange Postacoglu can improve Timo Werner and become a very, very different player, probably, you know, becoming the best player he can possibly be at this football club? I, I, listen, I, I, I don't put nothing past Ange. I think Ange is a bit of a magician. And I think, especially when it comes down to, to players, because he affects the heart, do you know what I mean? And he, he kind of, he, he, he gets you in, in the feels, in the emotion, in your water, you know, like... Your, your that, good friend. Darren Hart is saying, sign him. There, there we go. Hart man. Hart man sign, saying, him. sign him. If Darren <laughs> says it, we sign him. I mean, I know, right? Um, I, I was going to uh, say exactly the same as what Craig was saying there about Brian Hill and Werner. So th that is a great point. What I would caveat that with is that, you know, he could become a great squad player. There is that as well. Um, if Ange could give him the confidence to go out there and kind of get back up to that RB Leipzig, uh, Leipzig uh, form, then we, we could have a real bargain on our hands. Even if he comes in and does okay, we could still probably make a profit on him as well. Um, but like for me, I, I would let him earn it. You know, my, my only kind of apprehension with it is with, with the whole kind of, you know, the foreign player limit with, if and when we get into Europe. I mean, when? You know, when we get into Europe, all of the squads and the homegrown issue. You know, we always have a home homegrown issue, and and then how many foreign players are we are we allowed? And does that uh, uh, stop Ange and and the scouting team going for their number one left winger? As long as it doesn't do that, as long as we can, you know, balance all of those things, I think it is a no brainer. It is a no gamble because I think at the very least you get your money back if you want to sell him. You know he's still a good age. Um, he, he's like like Gaz was saying there. He's got a pace. He's got a pace. He's got a dribble about him. He's got a turn of skill. If he can put it all together, then you know what we, we could have a dynamite player on our hands. As uh, as Craig was saying there, he, he's striking up a great relationship with Timo uh, 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 with Brendan Johnson on the other side as well. He's just finding his feet in this team. How many players have we signed? I mean, apart from Benteke and Kulusevski, but I, it, it's a very rare thing when we sign somebody in January that they go on to make an impact like like Werner has. You know, Dan Juma didn't make that much of an impact. You know, so we, we've 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 found a player that fits the mold, that has the profile for a Postecoglou player on a loan, on a bargain deal. Let him earn his place. Let him find his feet. And if Ange thinks it's the best thing to do and it doesn't obstruct him getting his number one target in that position, yeah. then by all means. It, or if you can balance the books and get that uh, one player off like Brian Hill and then put in someone like Werner, then he's going to get more game time and he's going to give us a, a lot more than Brian Hill has. Hence why he ain't getting the games. You know? So... um I mean, like if the Hartman says sign him, then sign him. Talking about the game, and Postacoglu said, what I care about is the way that the team is progressing. Uh, pleased with today, it had a little bit of everything. We started the game well, not just a goal. I thought we contro controlled the game well. Then we conceded from a counter-attack, which was obviously disappointing. I thought we lost our way a little bit towards the back end of the first half. But a super reaction and the whole second half, we really were dominant. Uh, we played some good football and scored a couple of goals and created a couple more against a team that is desperate for points and fighting for everything. 
I guess every team is fighting for something and we handled it really well. Gary, let's come to you. I just wanted to ask you about Eve Basuma because I've written down here, after 17 minutes, Eve Basuma shot wide. That was his third shot in the opening 17 minutes. Um, a couple of minutes later, Nottingham Forest had a shot on goal, easy for Vicario. And then after 24 minutes, Basuma shot at goal again, comfortable for the goalkeeper. Four shots from Basuma inside the opening 24 minutes. What's changed? Yeah, I know. I was like, you know, unfortunately, he didn't score with any of them, but at least he was having a go, isn't it? Um, I just, it's a difficult one for Basuma because he started really well and then I just felt like he fell off today. You know, and it, it just was a little bit frustrating watching him, watching him. I just, I just can't really place it with Basuma at the moment. Again, he's just another player at the minute. It just doesn't seem to be quite right for us, you know. Kulu would have an example. I just think, look, it, I think it's a good problem to have because before, you know, like Son, I, I think Son played good today, but sometimes he's still a bit overplayed with the ball and stuff like that. He didn't have his greatest game, but again, he nearly scored, he hit the post. But we're in that position now where we're not just reliant on Son. We've got those other players around us. Do you see what I mean? And that's the good thing. So even though I feel Basuma didn't have a great game, you could just get him off and switch it up, you know, and you're bringing on Bentecourt and Saar. And that's that's kind of the beauty of it. Because great players are not going to be great all of the time. They're not. It's just how it is, you know. Gary, what did you make of uh, Nottingham Forest equaliser after 27 minutes? Because... Of course, Chris Wood scored. Um, yeah. Everybody around me just shouted the same words. Too easy. And we've yeah. heard that a lot in recent games. Too easy. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's it must be frustrating. Obviously, I wasn't at the stadium today. But when you're watching it on TV, you can just see it unfolding. You know, we take the lead. We start sitting back. You know, they pile on the pressure. They're going to get a goal. I knew the goal was coming. I mean, I think we were slightly unlucky. I think if you look carefully, I think it takes a little slight deflection off Romero and then it sets up quite nice for him. I could be wrong, but it looks like it just thinks off Romero. I think if that doesn't happen, I think then maybe we might have defended that, but the, too easy. And there was a couple of um, chances throughout the game. There was a few opportunities where crosses have come in and if their crosses had been better, we, we would have conceded because there was a few times, even in the second half, where there was players unmarked in our box. Mm. You know, mm. it's a bit of a worry. Craig, do you worry about the goals that we're conceding? Because it seems like the last couple of games, in particular, the West Ham game, you know, the corner floated in, Zuma heads home. Uh, the game before that, the Luton uh, goal, that seemed to be too easy. Are you worried about the goals that we are conceding and the way that we're conceding them? Yeah, it's a funny one, that, isn't it? Because it's, it's, it's like the old song um, from the World Cup in 98, you know, we're going to score one more than you. And as long as you do that, you're going to win games. They don't really matter. But it does concern me. But, you know, it should do, I think. You know, today, like you said, you hit the nail on the head. It's, it was too easy. Udogi didn't track back. You know, he, he's brilliant going forward. Sometimes I think he's still got a fair bit to work on defensively. He just didn't track the runner. Um, and it was a bit unlucky, as Gary mentioned, because... I think there was two nutmegs, one on the cross and one on the shot. It went through Romero's legs and Porro's legs, I think. So um, Vicario was kind of unsighted by it. It was a good finish. Um, and I think we got lucky <coughs> that, that Chris Wood tried to smash it through the back of the net when he hit the post because if he just dinked it, that would have been... That would have been 2-1, and, and, and obviously it would, have been a, it would have been a completely different game. Um, but, you know, you've right your luck in football. You know, I'm sure yeah. other teams are thinking they've had a bit of luck against us. Look at the Villa result at home. Look at the West Ham result at home, you know. Yeah. Uh, and there was there was other games. We was just looking. Can you put the table up again, Chris, if you've got it handy? Because I know it's all ifs, buts and maybes, but it's very telling when you look at it and you think we've had... Yeah. You know, sometimes we think we've had a bad season. We haven't had a bad season, but you know what I mean. We've had some bad results. If you look in it, it's tidying up those those goals. If you add the the game at West Ham or our place where we played West Ham and the Villa yeah. one, you know, and probably you can think of two Wolves. or three more. We yeah, Wolves. We, we'd Wolves, be up that, there, right? That game, yeah, one great. exactly. So we we would be on. You could easily argue. We should be on 70 points. And you could yeah. also argue the other way. I get it against the likes of Liverpool. You know, yeah, that yeah. was a lucky game. So it's all swings around us, I know. But <laughs> when I personally don't think, <clears throat> for the amount of, I've obviously criticised performances this season, I don't think we're that far away. 
And I don't, I don't think I'm being no. too overly optimistic. You know, those nine mm. points, ten points to make up, it's not, it's tiny moments. And if we can get that right, I think we need to, to strengthen defensively. I think a lot is not you can't blame purely the defence on. I think it's the midfield as well that, that are not doing their job sometimes. So you've got to look at that. It's not primarily the defence. You can't blame the defence fully. And even you could even say if we had a a cane like centre forward that can hold the ball up better. I mean, I love Sonny, but he's not the type of centre forward that holds the ball up well. If we had that, that might be a bit better for us. So there's loads of different elements to it, but I think we've got to definitely work on it. You know, and in answer to your question, yeah, it does concern me to a point. When you say we're not very far away, I think this is perspective here. The table, we're 10 points away. You know, with seven games to go, we're 10 points away from the treble winners, Manchester City, and we are 11 points away from the league leaders, Arsenal, and second place, Liverpool. Um, yeah. You know, in Angie's first season, you know, and, you know, dare I say it again, with Harry Kane leaving at the start of the season, everyone thought, where on earth are those goals going to come from? It's incredible yeah. work that Ange Postacoglu has done, in my opinion. Um, Timo Werner on playing for Tottenham. He obviously wants to stay at the club. He's just said, I'm enjoying it a lot, playing with this team, uh, these teammates in this style and in this stadium. Uh, I love it here. Um, Ricky, let's get your thoughts on um, Forest equaliser after 27 minutes. And um, as Craig also touched on, seven minutes later, shot on goal, Vicario made a great save and then the rebound come out. Chris Wood tried to blast it in, hit the post, uh, which was, uh, you know, turned out to be a pivotal moment, really. Yeah, absolutely. But I mean, I mean, again, I, th I think we need to give some praise to Vicario, you know, because, you know, he, he, he the same that he was pulling off again, but the same that he was pulling off in the first half, you know, he was big, he was strong, he was commanding, he was quick. That, that um, shot that Chris Wood had, that hit the post, you know, he's gone one way and then he's, he's dropped on the floor and then he's got himself up to make himself as big as possible to stretch over there. And who knows, you know, maybe that's what kind of prompted Wood to kind of hit the Imagine. ball as hard as he did or, you know, to slice it or to not have that much time to kind of compose himself to dink it. You know, I, I thought Vicario, especially in that first half, there was a double save in there in that first half as well. I thought he was fantastic. And I think he's growing week in, week out, you know. Um, and that's definitely something to be proud of. <clears throat> there, there, there's still things to do in this Tottenham side. You know, where was we this time last year? Same games. What was the point? All I know is where did we finish? Eighth, right? And and we're nowhere near eighth right now. Do you know what I mean? We're, we're in the top four and we've got 60 points on that table. And like you just said there, we're 10 yeah. points away from third and 11 away from top. Now, you know, for me, that's progress. And for me, yes, there are niggles. Yes, there are things that need correcting and they need working on. But we've progressed. We've progressed from last year. And that's what I asked for at the beginning of the season. I wanted us to, to progress. We now have an ethos. Our, the way our, st our style of play and the way that Ange likes to play is a very risk and reward type of football. You know, we are going to get on the counter. For me, that goal today, again, like everybody else said, it, it was way too easy. You, you doggy let him go. Then, as Craig said, there was two nutmegs that got through and then, you know, he, he kind of slams it home. It, it, it's tough. It's tough. But have we got room to improve? Absolutely. But do I trust Ange to, to make those improvements and, and to kind of get us in an even better place next year? Absolutely, man. Right now, it's about keep moving, keep building. Like Gaz was saying there about the squad as well. It's like there is there is now consequence for action and inaction within our first eleven. How many times have we just relied on that first eleven? How many times have we have to hang all our hopes on Harry or Sonny or like one piece of magic that comes out of nowhere? Right now, we've got a team that is firing. We've got a team that wants it. Even La Celso. Right, yeah. Lo Celso, The biggest thing for me from Lo Celso today, when he came off the bench to replace Madison. So again, you know, Madison's either getting tired or he's not having the effect that Ange wants to have on the game. So instead of rinsing him out, instead of keeping him on the field until there's nothing left and and to try and get another goal, it's like, no, no, come off. We'll take you off. It's all right. You know what I mean? We'll take you off. Let's also go on. And 
Look, LaCelso, like Craig was saying, he was on the floor, but he was making himself busy. The biggest thing that I noticed from him was his want. His want to impress. His want to do well. You know, the best version of LaCelso I have seen is under Ange Postacoglu. When you're talking about improving players, when you're talking about motivating players, when you're talking about kind of taking a player from one thing, <clears throat> one idea that we have with a Tottenham shirt to another idea, you know, like there's a great example. And even though LaCelso has not had the minutes, he comes on and he's ready to go. He wants to make an impact, whether it's a yeah. foul, whether it's whatever it is, a free kick, earning a free kick. We're seeing that, right? We're seeing that. And that's what's great about our squad right now. Our two centre midfielders, number one midfielders right now, they're not stepping up right now. Sars misplacing passes. You know, normally he brings energy, vibe and uh, exuberance in our game. Right now he's not having it. Uh, our number one, um, number six in Basuma is there. You know, when we conceded that goal, he didn't stand up. He didn't put a shift in. He didn't like grit his teeth and go, you know what, let's get hold of this game again. You know, and what happens? At half time, they get taken off. For, for me, like Gaz was saying there, it's the first time in a long time where we can trust in our squad, where there can be consequence for action, good action, and inaction, bad action. Do you know what I mean? Like, come off, let them fight for it, let them earn it. You know, I'm yeah. hoping that Kulu right now, Kulazewski is kind of chomping at the bit. I hope that he's pulling out his hair. I hope that he's gone all right and cool. I've had two weeks off now on the bench. You know what I mean? Like, I, I want to start next game. I need to do what I need to do. And that's what we want from every single player. We don't want anybody complacent. We don't want anybody sitting still. We don't want anybody thinking that they're guaranteed, nailed on to get in that starting lineup, to put that shirt on and to go out there and perform. You know, it's not guaranteed. You can't just get away with a mediocre performance. You can't get away with two in a row bad performances. Right now, there's so many players vying for your spot. And you know what? It's okay. We'll just keep chopping and changing. We'll rotate it. And, you know, then you've got to earn your way back into the squad when you come off the bench. And that's what's great, what's happening right now. And that's why Ange and the squad that he's built has been fantastic, bro. That's why I'm buzzing about it. Yeah. I think the best thing for La Celso, though, Ricky, is what he can do now is just be available for games. Mm. Because I completely agree with you. I think this is the best version of Giovanni La Celso in a Spurs shirt under Ange this season. But we just don't see him enough. And uh, mm. if he's available um, for games, then uh, all well and good. It will be good. Um, but after 38 minutes, um, shot on goal from Nottingham Forest. Vicario saved a minute before half-time. Uh, a good move from Spurs, resulting to the ball deflecting onto the bar. Of course, it was 1-1 at half-time. And Postacoglu made two changes at half-time. Um, talking about those changes, he said, yes, it made a difference. It wasn't anything Basuma or Pape Matasar did. I just thought I have the luxury now of a strong squad, uh, which I didn't for the middle part of the year. And I thought we yeah. needed some energy and legs in the midfield for the second half because I could see Forrest. Uh, they were working really hard to maintain their grip on the <clears> game. <throat> I thought Pierre Mihoybier and Rodrigo Bentenko were outstanding in the energy that they brought into the quality in the second half. Gary, Pierre Mihoybier and Bentenko coming on. It's fair to say it completely changed the game. Completely, yeah. You know, it's like what we spoke about. You know, um, Hoiberg. You know, he's had he's had a rough time at Tottenham, but you can't, you can never ever question his determination and stuff for the club. But what you're finding now is he's not just sort of kind of you know stopping up the pieces and keeping everything tidy. He's actually a good player. He's got a good shot on him. I mean, that shot that he done that, that was decent. He's not scared to have a go. And he's doing some good passes. He's he's improved. He's good. And it's just nice to have. I mean, Bendecor, we know about, you know, his, his technical ability is a different level to Hoiberg. But I would say, you know, you're talking about players that have improved under Ange. Well, God, I say Hoiberg's got to be up there as one of the most improved, you know, because he's he's coming on and he's winning us games, really. You know, they, they, they are impact substitutions and they're they're positive how many how many games how many seasons how many years and we had these substitutions and all the fans have grown and it's like it's a negative substitution but at the same time there wasn't any decent midfielders or forwards to bring on you know we was we was in a bad place but now they can make a massive difference and i just want to touch on what ricky said about the cell zone because 
I've always liked the Celso, and I, I, I'll even go back to Mourinho. I remember he came on as a sub against Man City and scored within like 10 seconds. There is a player in there with the Celso. You know, it, it, I know it's few and far between and his injuries and everything else, but I, I feel really good. It, it's not one of those substitutions where, you know, Madison or whoever coming off and the Celso is coming on. I'm not shouting at the screen or if I'm at the stadium, I'm looking at that as a negative substitution. It isn't. And neither's Hoiberg. I couldn't say that about Hoiberg, you know, a few months back, but I certainly would never say it's a negative substitution for Hoiberg. And you've got to put your hands up and say, it's Hoiberg and Ange for that. Brilliant. You know, it's absolutely brilliant. It's positive, man. It's really positive at the moment. The only, my only worry now is the next games coming up are going to be very different to Nottingham Forest at home. And let's see where we are with this running of the next few games because we know what the next five games are looking like, you know? But it, it is good. And, and, you know, games like today, we had to win this, you know, and we could have gone in 2-1 down at the break. We didn't. We rode our luck a bit and we came out and we was the Tottenham Hotspur we wanted to see in the second half. You know, it was good. Well, Pierre Mihoibier had an impact straight away because uh, two minutes into the second half, Hoibier shot from range, tipped over by the goalkeeper. And Amazing. 52 minutes, Spurs went 2-1 up through Mickey van der Ven and what a finish it was. <laughs> He said after the game, I saw the top corner was open, so I was like, oh, bang it in now, and saw it fly in to the top corner. Brilliant. Love it. Craig, how good is Mickey van der Ven? Because, of course, I know the Sky Sports today gave um, Mickey van der Ven man of the match. Um, he seems to be getting better and better, and this has got to probably be one of the signings of this season. He is. I think he's, uh, I think he's probably one of the best signings we've made in the last four or five years to be honest with you i think he's just sensational <laughs> and you would hope he's only going to get better and better he's probably due a pay rise to be honest with you uh, i wouldn't be surprised at all if we hear over the summer that they've renegotiated his contract because he's just yeah sensational it does worry me slightly that if we're not in the major competitions then in a season or two um somebody like around madrid's going to come sniffing for him but you know we can't think about that far ahead we just got to enjoy what he's brought to this team he you know he, he make he, he very important in the defender he makes very few mistakes um he's going to make them obviously there's no perfect player out there but he is just we just look a better team when he's in it he, he, he's just he's just solid and that that goal today i mean that i tell you that you if you watch it uh, from looking like from his point of view, there's a great camera angle when he's looking down the pitch. There's a bloke behind in, in the um, in the south stand. He's like that, even though you can see he's going to the goal because it was just going so fast. I would love to know. Yeah, great. I, 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 I... Don't tell that fan Sissoko who left years ago now. <laughs> I know he nearly hit me with a ball once in the warm up. It was it was quite amusing. Um, and you was at home. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely um but yeah no it, it, what a sensational strike and i'd love to mm. know uh, i was looking around to see if anybody had um uh, put up on a full sky would have done it actually the speed that went speed in at because i'd love i'd love to know what what speed that went in at but it was and it's a bit like the high beer chance i think when the crowd was going shoot i think you could see it just work he's that he's brain working thinking you know what sod it i'm having a go and it was a slot bang and obviously took a bit of deflection great save but the van der ven one the keeper kind of just went like that because it was in the back of the net before he could react yeah, but it's a sens sensational player very lucky to have him and a great bit of business those are the moments those are the moments boys isn't it those are the moments what what we do this for isn't it? it it was amazing you really have to just stop and just really take in that goal because that's that's why we're football fans and that's why we support tottenham because we, we do get these creative and these amazing players like that. And sometimes just by luck, it's unbelievable. What a signing. Craig, even, even though in the last couple of weeks, like in the press conferences, the journalists have actually said to Ange about the players not shooting. And a lot of us fans have been critical of our team not shooting in certain games, literally trying to walk the ball in. But today, you know, from what I've said and the notes I've written down and read out, it's, you know, Basuma, four shots. Uh, van yeah. der Ven shooting, of course, will come on to Pedro Poro's goal. There were so many more shots today. It seemed to be very different in that way. Yeah, it does make you wonder, doesn't it, sometimes when things change like that, whether whether the players have spoken about it, saying, look, look, look the fans have obviously picked on something, and I've noticed it. Um, we need to have more shots. 
you know, or as Ange even said that, it's weird, isn't it? Because it was, as you say, it was all over Twitter, everybody talking in WhatsApp groups, we need to shoot, we need to shoot. And obviously we were there on, on Tuesday, Chris, but I mean, we were saying shoot. How many times were we just saying shoot? The whole away fans were like, shoot, for Christ's sake, shoot. You're yeah. trying to walk it in and then it changes so radically. And, you know, perhaps some, sometimes they don't realise they're trying to play this tippy-tappy football and then scoring the perfect goal. And you've just got to get back to basics, which is yeah, trying yet. to shoot. And see, if you don't shoot, you don't score a goal. So it, yeah. it, it's probably a bit more complicated than that and not simple. But in reality, <laughs> if you don't shoot, you don't score. <laughs> and obviously today, we was having more long <laughs> shots. And I love that because that's Sonny's got that in his locker. Apart from anybody else, you look, you give the ball to Son 20 yards out. Who else in that team would you want to strike the ball from 20 yards out? It'd be Sonny, wouldn't it? And, yeah. You know, I don't know how far Van der Ven's run. He's probably on the edge of the area. But, Christ, that, that could have been 10 yards to 20 yards further out and it still would have been rising right. when it hit the net. So, just fantastic. But it is great to see us having more shots. And we got our just rewards today. Yeah. Oh, oh, also, <laughs> yeah I know, reckon let, he let, did, let, yeah. You know what? Let me caveat that with, did anybody see the training video this week? Just before Forrest? That they had no. a shooting practice and it was uh, all outside the box. It was all outside oh, really? the box. I, was yeah, all I did see it. Practice outside the box and then they were doing all the so, celebrations like yeah yeah yeah, yeah i so saw I it said, yeah i i think whether andrew said it, it for, for me it goes back to you know when you're trying when you're trying to force the play and then when you're in your flow you know we've seen patches of when this tottenham team and this Ange ball team is in its flow and it looks fantastic you know it looks easy to pass around you know everybody's hitting their spot we, we even when when we're getting counted on, we get the ball back quickly and we back up the field and it looks beautiful, you know, but we've seen it in patches and that's when they're not even thinking about it. Like I was saying against West Ham in that second half, it felt like they were trying to force the play and I felt that they were trying too hard, a lot of them, to try and score or to try and make a difference. But then it just looks rigid. Today in those first 27 minutes, they was playing in their flow state. Then if we've conceded a goal, we've gone in at half time and it was the reaction of that goal. Like, like I say, like it, it was the first time that I thought they, they kind of dropped their heads. They was kind of like, oh, and that's when the, you know, Forrest had their best moment of, of the whole 90 minutes was in that second half, second part of the first half. Yeah. But then whatever Anna just said at half time for them to come out and react like that and make the changes. You know, that making the changes the way he did at half time, especially two in midfield, kinda of, it, it says it sends a message to the whole squad about what is expected here. You know, it's cool. Good. All right, cool. The, the 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 way you just said it in in the press conference there, you know, it's not nothing to do with 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 Saar or Basuma. I just taken him out. This is what I what but what did he do? He made an impact and he sent a message around that whole squad that says, be on your toes. Do you know what I mean? Like, make yeah. sure that you're up for this fight. But if you're not, it's okay, because I still trust you. It's not like I don't love you no more, but you're just going to hold some bench time. But no player <laughs> wants to hold that bench time. Do you know what I mean? They're there for the calls, but they don't want it. They want to be on the field. So I think it's a great thing right now, man. All, the, the, from top to bottom right now, we're in a good place. Yeah. Ricky, let's stay with you. After 58 minutes, Pedro Poro made it 3-1. And of course, um, you know, we spoke about Pierre Mujoybier. Um, of course, Benson Kerr made uh, a real impact as well because he got the assist for Pedro Poro. But what a great move it was. Uh, Madison Cross, header from Benson Kerr. The great finish from Pedro Poro. Um, we've seen some good finishes from Pedro Poro this season, haven't we? He's a quality player. He's crosses, you know, he's a dynamic player. He's, he's got skill and, yeah. you know, he's just he's a fantastic player to watch. One of my faves at right back for a long, long time. And, you know, he doesn't have the perfect game, um, but he is one to be counted on. And look how consistent he's been this season. He's been fantastic. Look at that. Seven assists. That was his first goal. He should have scored more. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. I kind of feel that he has, in my heart, I feel that he has scored more than one goal. But, okay, he's, he's, today was the first one. He scored but in like, the cup, didn't he? It was in the FA Cup. That, thank, thank you. Thank you. Remember the, outside the box, the, that was the, a brilliant goal, man. These stats thank are just you. Premier League. So, 42 yeah. shots in the Premier League, one goal, XG 2.5. Uh, but he's played um, 28 games, started all 28 games and uh, played 2,517 minutes. And, as you said, seven assists. 
I mean, amazing. Seven assists. And and look at that. Like, how, how many year, how many seasons have we had problems at that right back slot? You know, when we, you know, Emerson gave us a lot of uh, right back, but then we, we're not convinced. He's then coming out of the side. You know, we've had Docky in there. We, we, you know, we, we've been going around in circles with that right back slot. So to have somebody in there who's played 28 matches out of 28, do you know what I mean? Started 28 out of 28. That is fantastic for us. It just shows you, you know, what a quality player he is. And you've got to remember, he's come from a right wing back attacking style of right, right back. And he's come, you know, he's been turned into this inverted right right back that has got to be up and down that field. He's got to defend as well as cross, as well as be a number 10 at times. Fantastic for Pedro, man. Um, I'm just excited with him, man. And, and I think under Ange, I think he's just going to climb and climb and climb. Gary, do you want to give any of your thoughts on, um, on the goals from Van der Ven and Pedro Porro? Yeah, just the Van der Ven one. I just loved it, honestly. But it, it, it's it's goals like that. Just you just love being a football fan, you know, and, and following your team. It's for them sort of moments. Uh, we touched on the Poro one. I was at the cup game, and you know, it was going nowhere that cup game. And one just little flash of brilliance from Poro outside the box. That goal. It's goals like that. Just makes you love the club and the players. Mm. But Van der Ven, what I loved about Van der Ven was when he scored his celebration, how much it meant. He knew as soon as his boot touched that ball, that was going in. And we really needed it. We needed a goal at any time. But at that precise moment, it was just perfect, man. Um, and it just kind of calmed the nerves a bit. And then, you know, like I said, we, we probably should have won it 5-1 in the end because Johnson, you know, any other time scores. And Son, you know, how that keeper saved that and then onto the post, you know, another day we win it 5-1. But no, Van der Ven, Poro, what can you say about these guys, especially Van der Ven? Craig touched on it. And the thing that, you know, I can't get my head around, he's not the shortest or slimmest of guys, but the pace, he's, he's recorded as the fastest player in the Premier League. And it, it almost doesn't seem possible because he's so tall and stocky and built. But fair play to him. He's absolutely unbelievable. Lightning speed. And yes, he's going to make the odd mistake here and there when he's defending. But, you know, there hasn't been many. Um, I, yeah, I can remember so many games where the four was out in front. And you just don't even think Van der Ven's got a chance. And somehow he gets back. It's just, it's actually like, it's almost like you can't believe it happened. He is he is amazing. He's absolutely amazing. One of my favourite players. And I'm glad he got man in the match because that's who I would have given it to. Um, I thought we had a brilliant game. So, yeah, really good. You yeah, answered my yeah. next question there, Gary. Um, Rick, who, who was your man in the match? It, it wasn't that. I'm so sorry. I was bursting. I just remember something. But just to say about Bentoncourt, the, the assist for Poro, you know that was like it was meant. The flick. Like he, 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 yeah, he, lovely. He, he, he didn't miss header it. He wasn't going for goal. It was meant. He saw that Poro was on that side and he purposefully Brilliant. kind of done that. A fantastic assist from Benson Cole, man. Um, that, that, sorry, that's sorry. Great, that, that's great understanding, though, isn't it? Yeah. 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 And, and, and that's what it is. And that's what it's all about right now. It's about the understanding. And you're seeing flashes of these things when they play within their flow state, you know? There's, there's like, it's almost telepathic what they've got going on right now when it's in its best form. Yeah. Craig, who would you give man of the match to? Uh, Van der Ven, uh, definitely, but oh, a very, yeah. very close second would have been Hoybier for me. But uh, yeah, he was only on the pitch half, a bit half. But to be honest, he pretty probably just nearly, nearly up there with Van der Ven for me because of the way he kind of helped change the game. So, but yeah, um, overall Van der Ven, hundred percent. Vicario would have been the man of the match in the first half, but the second half we didn't need to rely on him so much. But Vicario is fantastic in that first half. Yeah. I think one thing we've definitely got used to, Ricky, this season is the first half is completely different to the second yeah. half. Yeah, I yeah. know. Yeah. Craig, let me come back to you. Um, after 76 minutes, double change, Timo Werner and James Madison off, La Celso and Kulusevski on. What does Kulusevski need to do now to get back into the team? Oh, that, that's a question. He, he, his form for me, he just seems to have dipped a bit. There was a, there was a, uh, about five minutes from the end, he was put through on the left-hand side and 
he obviously didn't. He, he's never going to have the pace to outstrip a defender. Um, but he kind of just slowed up, stopped, and then lost the ball and fell over. Yeah. Um, it, it's just not working for him at the moment. All, I mean, to, to be honest, he's just got to keep working and keep trying. He's just not quite going his way at the moment. Um, is he? I mean, he's, he's not world class, but you know what you get him from Kulishevsky, and he's had the, the, the first season or the half season he was with us. He, he helped get us Champions League, so there is a player in there. Um, it just worries me that other teams have kind of worked him out, and the fact that he does cut back on his left, it kind of slows things down. And if, if you're a centre forward and you're running on. If you were Brendan Johnson coming in on that wing, you know he's going to skin somebody on the outside and it's all in one motion, bang, across. Whereas Kulisevsky tends to stop and then you're centre forward, you've got to check your run. You know he's going to check back on his left foot and then get across in. So it's a very different style of play on the right-hand side when you've got somebody who's left-footed cutting in all the time. So um, for me, I'd like to see him on the left if he is given a chance. I think that would be it'd be interesting to see if he could run a lot pass somebody on the outside and get a crossover. But as I said, his pace isn't his, his um, number one attribute. So it's, it's difficult. He says his best positions are number 10. So, um, and I know he, we've seen him there in the past. Um, but for me, it's probably between Madison and Lo Celso in that position. So he's, he's kind of fighting some big players and players that are playing well at the moment. You know, in Brennan Johnson and Werner seems to be the preferred two at the moment. So... It's going to be difficult for him, Chris, to get back in, but um, he, he's he's a good option to have off the bench. But again, for me, this is this is where we've got to build and look to build in the summer. And somebody like an Eze and a Lise, I'm not saying get both of them; that would be dreamland. But you know, it, these are the sort of players you've got to think about bringing in. And if if it's somebody like a Kulisevsky that they would look to sell on if if they bought in two players like that. I'm not saying sell Kulisevsky by by the way. I'm just saying another winger would have to go out. If if we if we sign Werner and we obviously bring another one in, you'd think one more has to go out. So so he, he, you know it's it's good though. It's it's healthy competition for the squad, and the only way you're going to get better is bring better players in and you know survival of the fittest and all that. Yeah. Ricky, let's come to you. Five minutes from time, Hunmin Son had a shot um, at the goalkeeper. Goalkeeper saved it onto the post. It then went out for a corner. Now, in a report today from the Times newspaper, um, they have stated that Hunmin Son has been insisting on high standards amongst the Spurs squad. Uh, he has been relentless looking for new ways to make a difference at this football club. Three words he has underlined to his teammates have been responsibility, behaviour and discipline. Now, first of all, what do you make of Hunmin Son's performance today? And also, a bit of a tribute to Hunmin Son, because, of course, he's just made his 401st appearance at this football club. He has uh, been a real leader for Spurs on and off the pitch this season. Oh, absolutely, man. We are so lucky to have a player like Sonny be at Tottenham for so long and, and for him to be our captain right now. Let's look back at, uh, you know, at Hugo Lloris and, and Harry Kane, who was the vice-captain, uh, but was captain many a time, you know, um, in Larissa's absence. We never heard a statement like that from them two. And, you know, one's a World Cup winner and, and one was the best player at the club. We, we, we never heard a statement from, 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 you know, either one of those players uh, to, to do with a squad like that. I, I also read that he was talking about kind of what to wear on an away day and, you know, whether it's better to get the bus or to drive your car. And, and he's already sorted these things out. And, He's really driving the standards and, and attention to detail is key when you want to reach the highest of the heights, you know, um, and, and that's what he's bringing. He's got class. He's, 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 he is world class. He is technically great. Um, but, you know, he's a leader that, that leads by example, as well as heart, as well as humility, as well as giving everything for, for uh, you know, 97 98 minutes, whatever the game is at, at, at any given time. You know, when we saw that, I don't know whether every fan has seen it, but please do go and watch it on the, uh, on X on the Tottenham Hotspur site, or you know, I'm sure you'll find it on YouTube or something. But that that video that they done for Sonny for his 400th game and stuff like that. You look, he's always been there for us. You know, whenever we needed somebody to to to, to count on, he's always done it. You know. Um, you know, I always go back to that point where 
Harry Kane was wanted to leave to go to Man City and we were playing Man City. And in fact, I think it was Nuno as manager as well. And yeah. with Nuno as manager and with the club upside down and in disarray, he signed a new deal. Not only did he sign a new deal knowing that Harry wanted to leave and it, and it was more likely than not that he was going to. But even when Harry was like, my mind's not right and I can't play in this game. because Also, Ricky, you got, got the goal against City. He 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 started game. responsibility, and he got the goal against City. Yeah, you know, ever since Pe it's the best thing Pep Guardiola ever ever done was was say that Tottenham was the Harry Kane team because someone was <laughs> like, "Oh, tight a minute, yeah, Yo, like oh, tight a minute." Do you know what I mean? I'm here. Um, Sonny is class, man. I love him to bits. I I love that he. You could see even in his reaction against West Ham uh, midweek. You know, in drawing the game, we didn't lose it, but we drew it. And he he was upset. He was angry about not getting that winner, if not in the second half, but in extra time. You know, you can see how much he wants to change Tottenham. You can see how much he wants to succeed for Tottenham. Even this summer when Saudi bids were coming in and stuff like that, he, his response was, I've got more to do at Tottenham Hotspur and I've got more to do in the Premier League. We're lucky to have Sonny. Yeah. Um, I think he gets better and better, to tell you the truth. I don't care where he plays. I know he gives everything. And he might miss a shot. He might miss a pass here and there. Do you know what I mean? But he's always one to be relied on. The only time that he had a dip for a sustained period of time, is he got. He, there's been times he went in and out, but for a sustained period of time was when he had that injury before he went and got the operation and so that he could be fit for this year. Do you know what I mean? But that's after... That's after army, you know, service. That was after, you know, World Cup qualifiers and Asia Cup. Like, he's, he does it all. Think about how he came back from international duty just now and then played how many days later for us. Like, he's phenomenal. He, yeah. he, he's the man. And, and I can't wait to see him lift the trophy for Tottenham. Oh, God, please. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I've please. done it for you, Chris. I've done it please. for you. Please. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You all mentioned the word trophy before me nowadays. <laughs> I'm still dreaming. I'm still praying. Yeah, um, and we've got a dream, man. We've got a dream. Of course. Well, we'll be dreaming about Champions League. I know Anne's might not be dreaming about it at the moment, but I'm sure he will be thinking about it. Um, as I said earlier, 60 points now from 31 games. We still have a game in hand over Aston Villa. Now, Aston Villa's remaining games in the Premier League are Arsenal away, Bournemouth at home, Chelsea at home, Bournemouth, uh, sorry, Brighton away, Liverpool at home and Crystal Palace away. There are some very, very difficult games in there for, for Villa. Um, now, Tottenham's remaining games in the Premier League. Newcastle away, City at home. Uh, that is to be rescheduled and we don't know the date of that at the moment. Arsenal at home, Chelsea away, Liverpool away. Uh, and let me just add that the Arsenal home game, the Chelsea away and the Liverpool away game are all in the space of eight days. And then we finish at home against Burnley and Sheffield United away. Gary, when we look at these fixtures, how many points do you think that we are going to pick up in these remaining seven games? And are you confident that Spurs will finish in the top four so we don't have to rely on if the English Premier League will be given a fifth spot in the Champions League for next season? Oh, do you know what? I'm just... The number that comes to mind, you're probably going to laugh at me, but I think I think we can get 14 points out of those remaining games. I'm just looking at them now. Um, 14? Yeah. Yeah. Where, where are they coming from? Um, I think we can... We'll draw against City. We're definitely going to beat Arsenal. We could get a draw with Chelsea. Um, I think we can beat Newcastle. We'll lose to Liverpool. We'll beat Burnley. Can we beat Sheffield United? 14 points. What about you, Craig? I can see Craig's adding his numbers up. Yeah, I am. I've just I've just gone through. I, I mean, I don't, I don't want to be uh, pessimistic or anything, but I, I, I think we I think we'll draw in Newcastle next week. Um, I, I think we'll draw with Arsenal. I oh, know, but you, we've had some shocking results in Newcastle. Um, I think that one will Chelsea, be right. I think we'll be comfortable up there. I hope so. I hope I'm wrong. But, uh, I mean, Chelsea away, as much as, as crap as they are in a basket case, we never do well there. No, um, never, it's, no. It, it's going to be difficult for us to get points there, as is Anfield. So, if we get nothing yeah, from those two, no. 
I think you've got to be realistic. Three, three at Burnley, um, Burnley at home's got to be a three point. The Sheffield yeah. United away has got to be three points because the bottom two sides, I think. And then City at home, if we can nick a draw there, they're, they're obviously going to still be in the title hunt. So I've got Danny in nine points. I, I hope it would be a few more than that. When you add them up, you're saying Newcastle draw, Arsenal draw, Chelsea, Liverpool, nothing, three out of Burnley, one out of City, three out of Sheffield United, that's nine. So I hope I'm uh, on the low side there and I'm not being pessimistic. I'm just being trying to be realistic yeah. going on previous it, results. So No one's right or wrong, but I, I do feel there's there's a few more points there. I generally do. And I'm not, I can I know Tottenham can turn up on a day and not, but looking at those fixtures and looking at it, guys, I think we could be definitely looking 14 points. I, I really generally do. On, on our performances and how we're playing, I think I think we are. That would get us fourth, Gail, without a doubt, if we did. Um, I can't yeah. see Villa getting any more than that. But you look, look, nine, ten points, I think should do it. You'd It'll hope, be enough, but... I reckon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ricky, I'm going to turn into Bruce Forsyth now. Higher or lower? <laughs> than Gary and Craig. I, I, I reckon it will be between Craig and Gary, between nine and 14. No, I'm joking. No, <laughs> no, look, you know me, I'm going to be super ultra realistic. And I think, you know, we're going to win every single bloody world game, aren't we? Do you know oh, what I mean? Can you like, imagine? Come on, like, of course we I are. knew that was coming. Listen, <laughs> listen Tottenham, bro. Listen, we're a crazy side. And, and when you've got a crazy run of games like that, there is nothing to think about. Do you know what I mean? As in the sense of you don't have to dibble dabble. You know what these teams bring to the table. You know what form they're in. You know what we've got to do. Pints. You know what I mean? And, and 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 you've got to get up for these games. And Tottenham always do. You know, Gaz yeah. just said there, we're not losing. I've heard so many of us kind of say, which kind of always kind of troubles me. But, you know, he said there, we're winning against the Gooners. I think we're, I always think this, I think we're going to beat Chelsea. Do you know what I mean? Like, at, at, at their house, I, I think we owe them. It's for, for very the, possible. For, for, for the first Chelsea game, for that first Chelsea game where they should never have won, revenge. I said that was, yeah, revenge, man. Like, absolute revenge. I I hope they ha have the same thing that happened to us, happened to them. Two sent off, two injured. Do you know what I mean? One of those crazy-ass games, but we go on and get that win. Man City, every single time we're doubted against Man City, we always turn up. Do you know what I mean? We always turn up, even in a shocker. Newcastle, Newcastle are a bit like this. So I reckon we can do them if we kind of get into our flow state. And in those last two games, Burnley, Sheffield United, I think if everything else goes well, then there's no stopping us. You know, yeah. don't touch us now, man. Like, we are going, mate. We are on it. Do you know what I mean? So it's, it's all about, you know, we've had such a bitty season right now. It's like, what do you want to do? What do you want to do? And somebody with a manager like Ange and with a captain like Sonny, we've got heart and honesty and passion and want and desire and, and, and effort and, and everything else that goes with it to go into these last seven games, why the hell not? Why can't we go out there and win every single game, if not be unbeaten in a, in a more and, and win more than we draw? Do you know what I mean? Why not? Liverpool is always dodgy. I'll give you that. Uh, I, I'll... I'll take a draw at Liverpool, but the rest we're winning. Let's have it. Come on. Are you going higher than 14? Higher, lower, higher, lower. Higher, higher, mate. Big Chris, this, what do you this think? Is why, this is why I absolutely love having you on this podcast, Ricky Norwood. How many are you Chris, going for, Chris? You, yeah, Chris, what do you think? How many points? Oh, I haven't thought about that. Um, oh, come on. Oh, oh that's a get out. <laughs> well, I think it's going to be in between, in between you and Gary. Yeah, uh, twelve. You're, 12, you're thinking right. twelve, aren't you, Chris? Look, as long as we're playing Champions League, I think that we have really progressed as a football club. Not yeah. only the men's first team, I think that the women's team has really progressed. The under 18s, the under 21s, and I think it's been a big year uh, for transformation and for uh, you know putting this in really good stead and foundations for the future. So, if we can get Champions League football next season, have a really good transfer window like we have done the two windows under and so far yeah. i think there are exciting times ahead i really do yeah but we we've, we've got to perform in games like that i think it's a big week that 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 is probably going to be defining defining that uh arsenal game the chelsea game and the liverpool yeah. game three very difficult games in a week um well, I know chelsea... the for, the, for the three teams you know it, yeah. we're going to decide the league really when you look at it you yeah. know what i mean yeah and, and Aston Villa. Aston Villa can have a, a big hand in, in who yeah. can win the title as well. 
Yeah. We, we we need the same energy that we had when Conte was in charge and we was going for we, we were going for Champions League and we was looking yeah, to gonna... that. You see you see that energy from the crowd where we just went from game to game and we knew we was gonna get those three points and we roared them on and we and Sonny got yeah. you know his golden boot like, at the end we, of that when as we well. Like Arsenal three nil, Ricky and Chris. Obviously, yeah. he was at the stadium. That that it was one of those games when you just walked in the stadium and you just knew we were gonna win it. We you need the atmosphere. We need the atmosphere repeated because that's, that's what we need. And, and I will touch on that. Yeah, I will touch on that, Chris, because the the atmosphere at the stadium. Say what I could tell from from the uh, from the TV, it wasn't that great. It was the fans were quiet to start with. I know when we went two one and three one up, they started singing a bit. But the best part for the first half, the fans were really quiet. Like it it seemed that way on the TV anyway. You know, there's always a bit of noise in the south stand, but. It didn't seem very loud um, the first half, you know. And I think when you are, you know, drawing or even when you do go behind, that's when you've really got to try and lift the players, you know what I mean? More so than when you've got a comfortable two, two or three goal um, advantage, you know what I mean? You know? Yeah, we need we, we need to get the Ange song going again. We need to get yeah. Hulu song. We need to get Ben Benton Curse. We need to get all of the songs going. Yeah. We need to, do you know what? I know, I know some people thought it was annoying, but I miss the drum. Especially when it goes quiet, with when the drummer yeah. back in the day at White Hart Lane, it 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 get us going. It it lead the charge with noise. You yeah, know what I mean, and and sometimes it takes that. I remember being there at Luton, and it was a little bit quiet there. And I was trying to get him going. I'm like, come on, and I was trying to get him going. Yeah, but yeah. like in patches, it, it 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 wasn't happening. Do you know what I mean? But for me, we, we for definitely, me, for me in the stadium now, I think if you're not in the south stand, there doesn't. It's not really much noise really it doesn't you know in the old stadium obviously it used to travel around and everyone would get involved but it's it's not it's just not like that at the moment but you know if you're sitting in the south stand you, you you'll be scratching your head saying when they talk about it on tv or the away fans say they're quiet because you'll be thinking we're not quiet because when you're in the south stand i've never been in the south stand and they've not been songs and there would be noise but yeah. sideline you know west stand east it, it can be a bit quiet at the moment which is concerning because we are fourth in the league. Let's, you know, let's not forget that. And we have yeah. improved massively. The disco, so was back. The, disco, the disco was back for a short time at the end of the game today. And uh, quite yeah. the show, Ricky Norwood saying, I remember the Luton game. Unlike the story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I remember bits from the Luton game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gary, but, let's but, talk to you. But no, we, we, we need the flags. We need the fans on yeah. side. Listen, if you're yeah. lucky enough out there to have a ticket to go to any one of these seven games, make sure you sing up. Make sure you shout up. I don't care what the score is. You get those boys and you roar them onto victory. Man. Yeah, you've got to be so, coming like, home and your on. throat's killing you and you've got a sore throat. That's what happens with me. I mean, that's just because I talk too much anyway in general, but, you know... <laughs> Lastly, let's talk about the Newcastle game. Of course, it takes place on Saturday, 12.30 kickoff at St. James's Park. Now, Newcastle's last six results, they lost 4-1 at Arsenal. Uh, they beat Wolves 3-0. They then lost 3-2 at Chelsea. They won against West Ham 4-3. Their last two results, drawing 1-1 home to Everton. And they won on Saturday away at Fulham 1-0. So their last six games, winning three, drawing one, losing two. They are eighth in the league table. Now, you can see from the graphic on the screen here, their home record so far this season, played 16, won 10, drawn three, lost three, 33 points. Now, the teams that they actually lost at home at St. James's Park against Liverpool, Nottingham Forest and Manchester City. So the last time they lost at home in the Premier League was on the 13th of Jan. Players to look out for, Alexander Isak uh, with 15 Premier League goals this season, Anthony Gordon with nine and Callum Wilson with seven. Um, their top assist maker, Kieran Trippier, of course, former Spurs player, with 10. Anthony Gordon with six. Gary, let's start with you. How are you feeling ahead of this Newcastle game? Because it's fair to say we've had some quite mixed results up there, including being 5-0 down after 20-odd yeah. minutes with, the, with, with, with most of the away crowd going after 20-odd yeah. minutes. That's that was you know that's never going to happen again. Touchwood, <laughs> but I'm feeling really confident. I think I think we'll get a result there. I generally do. I don't even think it'll be that difficult. I think it will probably be more comfortable. They suit us the way they play anyway. It'll be more open football. It won't be sort of you know sitting back, low block. And I and I think we'll you know I think we'll comfortably win. I really do. I think it will probably be another three-one if I'm honest. But I think we will we will uh, get over the line with that game. 
Yeah, we will concede. We always do as Tottenham. But I think we'll, it'll be a really good performance. Um, and it will set us up nicely for the um, the eight-day running with those games because <laughs> that's, you know, it, we need to go up there and, and get a result, which we will. And then it just sets us up nicely for those next few games that are coming because that's when things get really serious, you know, because it's not just... It's not just about us, but, you know, like we touched on earlier, we're going to make a massive say on who wins that Premier League, you know. Um, just we just got to beat Arsenal. I, I don't want to be like losing to Arsenal and beating Liverpool at Anfield. I mean, it's, I'd rather take a defeat at Anfield and beat, and beat Arsenal. I've said it, you know, and I know we want to win every game and stuff like that. But at the same time, we win in the league, full stop, Woolwich. So we have to play our part. You know, and like Ricky said, we should try and win every game. You know, Crane's a realist. We're not going to win every game. We know that. But I do think there's enough there from Tottenham. You know, I know West, West Ham game was a bit frustrating, but we were still the much better side in that game. And I do feel when we play teams like West Ham and Forest, they are difficult. They are hard to break down and stuff. But, you know, you're looking at them games and you're thinking... Chelsea, Liverpool, Newcastle, City. Oh, God, you know, a lot of Spurs fans will be thinking the worst. But those sort of teams, they do suit us. You know, it is going to be so many opportunities and stuff. And if the players are on their game, then there's no reason why we shouldn't be scoring a good few goals against all of those teams. It just depends how many we concede from corners and set pieces and silly things like that, you know. But I think we'll, I think we'll beat Newcastle 100%. So you've got to go three one, Gary. Yeah, yeah three one. I think yeah. Craig, um, do you think that Ange Postecoglou will make any changes in your score prediction? Yeah, I do. As I said before, I think um, Hoybier and Benteke are coming to the middle. Um, I think Richarlison should be back for it, but I think he'll stick with the front three he started with today. Uh, and Madison on back four and the keeper should be the same, barring any any injuries. So um, I'm not as positive as Gary about this result. Because purely because of, of recent history, not even recent history. We never tend to blow Newcastle away. Um, I would love to sit here and I, I'm tempted to change what I said 2-2 two, two, to 2-1 to two, or 3-2, something like that. I think there's definitely going to be goals. But I will stick with what I said originally. I think it's going to be a draw. I'm going to go for 2-2, two, two, but hoping, obviously, for a Tottenham win. Um, then, then, obviously, the main one, the North London derby, um, I would, I would just love us to uh, turn them over. I would absolutely yeah. love us to turn we them over. To. But you know, to stop them winning the league almost, yeah. um, which you'd think at that stage probably going to really put a dent in their title challenge. Yeah. Um, but the Newcastle <clears throat> game to play first. So, so yeah, I'm going to stick with two two, uh, but hope for a, a two one three two something like that. Ricky, what are you thinking? Yeah, you know, I totally, I totally agree with um, what, exactly what Craig is just saying there, man. Um, but for for me, I'm, again, I'm going to keep it really. Re- I, I I think that there'll be, I, I I think it'll be two two, and I think that Newcastle will score uh, one goal from open play, and Chippio will hit a free kick to make yeah. it two two. Uh, and Not I the think time. Yeah, and I think I think Sonny will score one, and I think Madison will score one. But at two two, I see Richarlison coming on and banging another two, and then going like this, you know, like going like this, and Wilson on the bench, you know, giving him his like Brazilian bogle, bruv, and going, yeah, what about that, bit, bruv? Do you know what I mean? To make it four two Tottenham, three this points. Let's go. Let's get this train rolling. Let's get the energy rolling, and let's go into the next couple of games. Let's have it. Four two Tottenham. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Ricky, last question for you. Um, what do you make of Anz Postacoglu's comments in his pre-match press conference ahead of this game? Because he spoke about the players that he wanted to sign, about players not wanting just to come here for Champions League football because they want to play for Tottenham Hotspur. Um, he spoke about um, you know good decisions, coaching, players, admin, our planning is going really well. We all know, we've spoken about it all season, he speaks so well in press conferences, but I think he's putting a lot of confidence in a lot of the doubters. 
um, certainly for next season. But he also said, you know, he spoke a lot about finances because a lot of the journalists ask so many finance questions. And he says, you know, we're a football club. We're not a bank. What did you make of those comments? Oh, I love him. I love him even more for it. I think that's fantastic. I think we've had players in the past that have come just for Champions League football or just for the pay packet. And we've seen that they haven't really worked out, you know. So to, to it goes back to the, to what type of characters, again, that Ange wants at the club. And, and to get that type of quality, it's not just about your technical abilities and, and you know, your, 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 your green ticks on the old, uh, on, on the list. It's, it's about your, your, your character. It's about what do you want to do? Do you want to be here for Tottenham? Do you know what I mean? Like, I think that's one of the greatest things. I think that should be music to all of our heroes. You know, and it shows you again why we're lucky to have a manager like Ange and why he is definitely the man, the man to take us forward. Um, you know, think about the recruitment. We've had pre-planning. We haven't waited until the window's open. These Tottenham fans, hear what I'm saying. We haven't waited until the window has been open and then waited for opportunities and then go, oh, yeah, all right, I'll have him. There's pre-planning. Vicario was pre plan Mickey Van der Ven was already on on his list do you know what I mean like you know like it, it, Dragustin do you know what I mean like there's pre-planning they've done that before the window opened and they've even said now already before the summer there's pre-planning mm -hmm. so we're in a really healthy situation and I love that attitude that he says it's not just about Champions League you know we need to be ready to challenge Champions League we need to be ready to challenge the league and the cups and we want to be a, a side that goes for everything you know what i mean and that's the type of manager that we've been waiting for uh, while yeah. playing sexy football well i'll leave you with this pedro poro on instagram he said a special goal for the most special woman happy birthday from north london mum vamos love it <laughs> vamos love it <laughs> gary <laughs> gary thank you so much for coming back and uh, hopefully we we'll have you back on again soon where can people find you on social media and what you're up to at the moment? Yeah, um, I don't tend to go on X very often. Craig knows why. Um, so <laughs> he's bad. He's bad. <laughs> I tend to just be on Instagram. So you can find me on Instagram, Gary Maloney13, Facebook, Gary Maloney. I'll post up stuff there. You know, I'll be resharing your show tonight, Chris, obviously, and, and, and all the highlights, everything. And yeah, I just, you know, that's where I'll be. So, and uh, yeah, listen, I always love being on the show. And, and like I said, and a lot of people said, this is the dream team. It's such a nice, easy show to do. I absolutely love it, man. So, yeah, always a pleasure, Chris. Thank you. It's like four geezers sitting in a pub, isn't it? Talking about Tom. <laughs> <laughs> we're, about, we're about the drinks, though, this week. Um, Craig, um, I gather that you've had a few people come up to you this week and uh, said how they enjoy the show. I know Ricky and I had that a lot last week at yeah. the stadium, which... You know, we thank everybody for supporting this channel and, uh, you know, for all the wonderful feedback. And, of course, we've been number one, the number one football podcast, three weeks running in South Korea. So thank you so much. Uh, but, Craig, you've had a good week. And uh, where can people find you? Yeah, it's strange. A couple of blokes over the last few weeks have come up to me in the toilet and, and oh, yeah. recognise me. And Yeah, it's really, really bit weird. Easy. But... Uh, it, um, so it just well. so happens, like, yeah, it was. No, it just so <laughs> happens I was in the toilet at the time, and obviously it's loud in a pub. So, so it's really, yeah. but it's really nice to get nice comments and all positive, and people yeah. enjoying it. So, old oh, security's here. I think we're getting booted out. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, if you want to give me a follow at DM9 on on X, Perfect. um that'd be that'd be lovely. But yeah, I'll see you on the next one. Another three points, and let's hope for another three points again. Can everyone say happy one. birthday to Phil? Happy birthday, Phil. Phil. Yes. <laughs> Come on, you Spurs. He doesn't look a day over 65, does he? No. <laughs> 15, <laughs> back in 34 years. Ricky, thank you so much as always. Where can people find you? And Oh, you guys know where to find me. Do you know what I mean? I'm going to make it quick. On, on X, it's at Ricky J Nord. On Insta, it's official Ricky Nord. And always an honour and a pledge to be on, especially when you get those big three points and a good performance. So let's keep it rolling. Come on, you Spurs. Well, thank you, Gary, Craig and Ricky. It's thanks, been man. a absolute pleasure talking to you. And uh, no thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks for listening. And we will see you again next week. Come on, you Spurs. Come on! Come on.